G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Interesting product on the bench today. This is going to be a two-part review because I've given up waiting for the weather to cooperate. I'm going to do the bench side first. A little bit of a look at the technology, look at what they're doing here and where it might fit into the market. And what have I got? Well, I've got a transmitter, a receiver, GPS, a little 3-in-1 control unit and then some 3M things. And of course I've got some instructions. Ta-da! So what am I looking at here? Well, we're looking at a, this is a transmitter from a company called Detrim. Now, I hadn't heard of Detrim before they sent me this stuff, but everyone I've spoken to about them says good things of them. So, hey, maybe this is going to be a very pleasant surprise. Now, this transmitter here is obviously inspired by a very well-known brand. This is called the Blitz DT9, and I think we know which brand has inspired this. And in fact, I think there may even be some compatibility between this and the brand we're talking about, because they say they've got this this um, DT link, which is a frequency hopping spread spectrum and direct sequence spread spectrum, which is exactly how DMSX works. So mm, we'll find out. We'll do some testing later on, see whether this can work with your favorite spectrum equipment. But hey, as I say, inspired by spectrum now, it could be a little bit subjective. Oh, I'm not a fan of the case color, honestly. I'm not a fan. Um, it probably won't show the marks if you drop it in the mud, but that's probably its only redeeming quality. However, the people at Detrim have said, we do have a silver one. and to be totally honest, I like things that are a bit different, but I would go for silver over this colour. But it's a personal choice. Nothing um, nothing to be really said other than that. Now, one thing that impressed me was they said, what mode do you want? I said mode one. And look, they sent mode one. That means they listen. Now, we've had a few companies recently that don't listen and don't really care, but obviously Ditchram is listening and they took, went to the trouble of setting up a transmitter mode one for me, which is great. Makes my review process so much easier. If only the weather would do the same. Right, so what have we got here? Well, it is a, a nine channel radio transmitter, 2.4 gigahertz spread spectrum. Not much to see there. I mean, you know, dime a dozen. So, so why am I reviewing it? Why, you know, there have been a million and one spectrum clones. Why would I review this one? Well, because it's what they've got here that makes the difference. Now, this is a receiver. Pretty big receiver, isn't it? But it's not just a receiver. It's a receiver and flight controller, autopilot flight controller, which is kind of good because it has a GPS. There you go. All the normal flight control operations return to home, that sort of thing. But you don't have to get carried away doing stuff like that. Now, this is the other way of putting a flight controller in your model. You get yourself one of these um, boards from China, and you flash iNav or, or Ardu Pilot onto it, and you get lots of soldering done, you wire up, and there's, there's bits everywhere. It looks like a giant mess. Um, that's the techie way of doing it. Now, a lot of people would love to have a model with a return to home and an autopilot in it, but they, they just don't feel confident with all the soldering and the wiring and all that sort of stuff that's involved. This is the answer to that. Now, there's been a few products like this come out recently. The ZOH or ZOHD have brought out their Copilot, which is a similar, super simple flight control system. And then there's this. Now, this is even simpler than the ZOD because this has the receiver built in. You don't even have to connect the lead from the flight controller to the receiver. It's all done internally. All you can do is plug your servos in. Plug your servos in along there. Plug the GPS in along here. Well, that's interesting. They don't give you, there's no polarization on this connector. I suspect you won't be able to damage anything, but if you plug it in backwards, it probably won't work. Um, if I can get it in the hole, it was much easier before. Here we go. So you plug a GPS in, you plug your servos in, you bind it up, and you fly. What could be simpler? And to make life even simpler, now one of the problems with these minimal or these super simple flight controllers like the ZOHD and, and not so much this one, but certainly with the ZOHD, is that to get simplicity, you sacrifice function. Right now, the beauty of the the iNav or the Ardu Pilot set up like this is that you can go in on your laptop or whatever, you can configure all the parameters you ever want. How high it's going to fly when returned to home, the diameter or the radius of the turn circle when you're in position hold, all those things can be programmed through your computer. But a lot of people might be a bit tech phobic. They don't want to get involved with computers. It's all too much. You've got to get the right software installed. You get the drivers installed on your computer. You've got to sort out the conflicts. It can be a nightmare on its own. But a system like this, it sells you on the simplicity. Uh, they even give you this little box here. This little box here is the is the controller for the system. So you don't need you don't need to have your own computer or anything. It comes with a controller. Comes with a little cable. Oh, bang on the camera. Comes with a little cable. So you plug cable in there into the receiver. Bing, 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 bing. Set up all your things using that little standalone bit of kit. So you can go to the flying food. You can change parameters without having to take your laptop with you. Bonus points for that. So. Mm, this really is kind of, it's more configurable than the ZOHD Copilot, but it, and it's even simpler because it has this built-in receiver and this dedicated little controller, which also doubles as a battery tester. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's got, if you're building something with an LCD screen, why not just 
double it up. I think it also might even do a ESC testing and it's got other options as well. So I don't know. We'll find out when I do the full review. What I wanted to do in this video was get the review process started because I'm waiting for the weather and find out from you guys if you've got any specific questions you want to know and uh, things that I can test during the test. Now I've got to put this in an aeroplane of course. Ha ha ha. It is a fixed wing flight controller. It's not a quad controller. At least I didn't see any mention of quads. I think it says it is for, let me read this out, um, suitable for normal wing, flying wing and V-tail airplanes. There you go. So that's what it's suitable for. So we'll set it up in a plane. I'm not sure what I'll use it in. I was going to put it in perhaps the sub 250, but uh, this would obviously take it over 250. It's not heavy, but I mean, one of the things I noticed immediately is look at the length of this GPS cable. It's probably a little excessive for most small model installations. So I'm thinking um, I've got my old Hobby King EPP FPV model. I haven't flown that for over 10 years, I think. I might haul that out of the dust, fire it up, put this in it, and we'll use that as a flying test bed. And the weather is supposed to improve in the next few days. So part two should be coming really soon. But in the meantime, as I say, if you've got questions, anything you want to know about the system and any particular tests you want me to do, then please say so. Now, one other point I should point out, which is probably, I think, the biggest weakness of these super simple systems is there is no OSD. There's no OSD. Uh, with your with your F4 flight controllers and your INAV and stuff, you can ha you have an OSD there. That's really handy because it tells you your, your all the informa information you want, altitude, uh, distance from home, direction to home, your coordinates, your speed, all that sort of stuff, which is really kind of nice to have. This, where well, are you going to fly bareback? But you know, to be totally honest, I fly bareback anyway. I, I generally have the OSD turned off on my FPV equipment because uh, as long as I'm, I can tell when I'm under 400 feet, I know which way is home. And I don't really fly that far away most of the time. And if I do, I've usually followed a fence line or, or a, a sort of track in the paddocks and things. So I know how to find my way back. I don't need the return to home. It is handy if you're testing something out because if something goes wrong, you lose your video, flick a switch, it flies back to you. But uh, if you want OSD, this is probably not the system. Although you could, to be fair, you could buy a separate OSD, but you're going to need a separate GPS and things. And that's really not suitable. This is for um, someone who wants to have an RC system with stabilization and return to home and doesn't want to mess around with a lot of wiring. It doesn't need an OSD. It might not even be flying FPV. I mean, you might want to fly this just for extra confidence and extra control on a line of sight model. And if it gets too far away, you get disoriented, flick the switch, turns around, comes back. Bit of an update. I've done some work. And um, as you can see, I've put this, the receiver, the actual receiver flight controller needs to be placed near the center of gravity, they say. That's because the accelerometers don't want to be too far from the CG otherwise they tend to give the wrong readings. Gyros don't care but accelerometers do like to be close to the CG so that there's there's less acceleration forces, it's more balanced. Um, so I've had to put this here on the, I'm using the Hawkskye, the Dynam Hawkskye, it's pretty much a Bixler in any other flavour. Um, so I've had to cut a bit out the top, put it there, but it's, um, I'm a little, you know, the, the receiver's quite big and also the way it's set up, you can have a couple of orientations, you can have it upside down or on its side or flat like this, but this bit has to point to the front according to the instructions. The antennas come to the front, which means it's a long run for the servo wires all the way down there to the back. Maybe an issue on some planes. It is a bit of an issue on here. I've had to use some extensions on the standard servo connections. And the other thing is I thought, this G GPS thing is just too big and bulky and thick and like, uh. and also I noticed that the, I had to peel back some of the heat shrink around there because it wasn't staying, it wasn't even staying in. It was too loose and it would work free. But you see how much height is required for this GPS lead here. On a smaller foam model like this, it's really, there's not a lot of places to put it because on the Hawks guy, your battery takes up all this front compartment here. There's, they've got push rods and things. There's no real place to put it in the back there. This is really the only place to put a flight controller on a Hawks guy uh, if you want to fly FPV as well. So it's going to have to go in here. This wire has to poke out in the breeze. And I've got so much extra length here. And it's so, it's not flexible. It's pretty stiff. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put the GPS. I don't want to put it directly above the ESC because that's going to create a lot of noise. I was going to thinking of putting it up the front here. That's quite a long cable run, but I'd rather have my FPV gear up the front. I'm not sure what I will do. And also, I mean, even if I put it up the front, I'm going to have to run this down under there. There's going to be a big loop poking out here. It is, I think Detrim could do a lot better in terms of cabling and orientation options um, because this is just, you know, it's a little bit difficult, certainly on this model. Other models where you've got more room, probably not an issue. But I suspect a lot of people, if they want to get, you know, a lot of people fly foam models like this. And, and smaller models are becoming the norm. So having something that's big and bulky like that, not the best option. Okay, admittedly, if you're going to use an F4 omnibus or something in there, it's going to take up as much room. But 
but your options, your cabling options are much improved. Um, you can have your receiver way down here in, in the guts of things. And there is a separate standalone version of this. You don't have to use the one with the built-in receiver. They do have a standalone. So I'm going to have to do a bit more work to get this practically installed. Uh, not a problem. And uh, I will continue doing that. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get some flying out of this tomorrow. I have to set up the transmitter. I'm not a, I'm not a Spectrum guy. I don't know the model, the, the, the menus and everything. I didn't get a manual of this one, probably online. So I'm going to have to fudge my way through that to use the Spectrum gear, set up the throws and expos and all that sort of stuff, uh, channel directions, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we'll carry on. But yeah, this GPS thing, if, if I was going to be using this, I would just replace this with a much more flexible, shorter cable, because ideally, um, it should just come straight out onto the wing. End connectors, that's what I'd say to uh, to Detrim, end connectors. Don't, don't, these top connectors, a bit old school. Most receivers these days have end connectors. Far, keeps everything low profile. If we had end connectors and we could put the receiver the other way around, this would be a very simple install. So just, to, you know, just a few, I try to give constructive criticisms where I can. And I'd say to Detrim, if this thing electronically is good, I'd love to see a version with end connectors so that it would just fit in there so much easier. And I suspect it'd fit into a lot of other models so much more easily than is the case with this installation. But hey-ho, that's what we got. We work with what we have. And so hopefully tomorrow I'll get this in the air and we'll test it out, see how it goes. In the meantime, thanks for watching, as I said, and all the usual stuff. You know what I mean. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. Bye for now.